Hello internet, thank you for clicking on this video. If you don't have great skin, you're struggling with redness, you have acne, acne scars, but you've kind of been like pulled into that Glossier marketing campaign. You know the one where everyone on Instagram just looks like a beautiful, hydrated, dewy, glowing goddess model without trying hard at all. Like you're just naturally perfect. But like I was saying, if you have that problematic type of skin and you've been wondering like can those products work for me I'm gonna show you how I make them work on my skin and let you know whether I think they're even worth your time fussing with so if you want to see how I got this kind of natural glowy look that makes me look like maybe I'm not wearing makeup I mean I'm sure you, I'm like sure you don't surely you don't think my cheek looks like that naturally but this is how I achieve the natural type, I'm not wearing makeup look, even though my face is red as fill in the blank. Okay, I have my Glossier products in this cute little bag that it comes in. So the first thing I'm going to do is use the Glossier Skin Tint. It's called the Glossier Perfecting Skin Tint. I have the shade Light. Now I'm going to show you how much coverage this actually has. If you've ever been curious, I know a lot of YouTubers have reviewed this and said like there's no coverage but you know as you can see don't have um, great skin right now I have a lot of acne scars and some current acne that I need to take care of and generally just a really red kind of sensitive irritated face so I'm going to show you how I actually use these products to make them work for me because they can work for you but it'll be up to you to decide whether this would bring value to your own experience with makeup. Um, so what I do is I take probably two lines across the forehead because I mean it's quite large. Every time I say I have a big pe forehead people are like no you don't. I'm like I literally have the definition of a five head like take my four fingers and my thumb and there, that's my forehead like you don't have to be nice. There are many people in the world who have large foreheads that we appreciate, like Rihanna, for example. So I'm in good company, it's okay. So what I do is, I don't use any brushes for this because this really is a very sheer coverage. And I find the formula just works well with your hands. So I just spread it in with my hands. This is kind of my, actually, I've been wearing this to work all the time. I work in an office and I, it's kind of the environment where you feel like, I don't know, like nobody there is wearing full glam makeup. It would kind of look odd if I was just like super dolled up every day. So I keep my makeup pretty natural on a day to day basis. And this is an easy way to kind of just start a base. But I wouldn't necessarily say this is my favorite light makeup application but there is a way to do it but you really have to understand what you're getting yourself into with this product so to me this product gives you a little bit of a sheen to your skin um, and it does feel kind of tacky like dewy when you apply it it doesn't feel like it's not gonna dry down and I think that's the beauty of it for some people is that Maybe if you just have skin where you're like, oh, I just wish I had some brightness and a tiny bit of coverage. This is, this would probably work for you. Um, cause it does definitely add a sheen and the coverage is very minimal. So for me, like, for me, <laughs> this would not be enough. So I'm going to show you what I do with the stretch concealer. And if you've ever wondered if the stretch concealer can work for acne, you're going to find out right now. Because I've used this on multiple occasions, and I know specifically what I like to use it for now. Um, it's not your everyday concealer, for me at least. If you look at it, look how emollient it is and shiny. This is going to give you a beautiful glow. Although this product is super hydrating, it strangely clings to dry patches, which is kind of it's just it's just weird um so i'm just gonna take it on my cheek area to dull down that re redness i have there because i have like 
don't know if it's rosacea, but I definitely have like broken capillaries on my cheeks. And they're just always red. This is probably the most toned down my face will look in terms of redness. Um, because I showered a while ago and I've already had my moisturizer and um, serum on, so right out of the shower I'm like bright red. I can't put it on my nose or anywhere like up here. If you see where, like you see the amount of pores there, like the large pores and the texture, it just really clings to that texture in a bad way. Under the eyes, I just find that it doesn't look good by the end of the day, so I avoid my eye area as well. And on acne, here, we'll, we'll do this one for the sake of it, but um, you'll see. Like if you see there, it really doesn't add enough coverage for acne spots for me for it to be workable. And like I said before, it oddly will cling to dry patches even though it's so emol emollient. So I just don't use it for acne. And I know the point of this video is to show you how it works on acne prone skin and redness. So if you came here to this video to see how this would perform to cover your acne, my verdict on it is don't buy it for acne coverage because I just don't think it's your best option. But if you already have it and you want to see how you can use it, I mean, this is, this is the tutorial for you. So I'll just blend it in with my fingers, like so. It gives me some redness coverage on the cheeks and gives a glow. So this is where we're at with the skin. And unfortunately, I'm gonna have to pull some products from my own collection. So I'm taking the concealers I use day to day and showing you what I do with them. So I really like this Maybelline. It's faded, so I don't know what it's called, but it's, you know, one of their dream, I think it might be Dream Lumi, the brightening kind of pen. Um, this is the shade Radiant. And then I also really like the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer. I think it's a good everyday concealer that doesn't look doesn't look heavy. It looks really good on the skin. Really nice blended out as a foundation. So what I'm going to do is just take some of this under my eyes. Because I'm very purple. As you can see. I just got blessed with the best jeans, you know? Just a natural beauty. So that's where we're at with this concealer. And then I'll just put a little bit of Fit Me on. You don't really need to do this. You can just pick one or the other because this is a natural look. But I just want a tiny bit more coverage in certain areas. And like, you can see my nose doesn't look great today. Uh, I just, I really struggle with this area texture wise. So it tends to have products settle there and get kind of flaky. Now just look at your face and see if there's any spots that like super stand out. The point, oh wait, up there. This is hard to do on camera. I always seem to miss like certain things. Everything over here, just gonna leave it because the point of this is to be natural and look like skin. That is the glossy look 100%. If you want full coverage, matte, like that's not. <laughs> This is not the, these aren't the products for you. So I personally did not purchase their Wouter because I'm just not into loose powders too much. I still think Laurier, Laura Mercier Translucent is the best powder out there that I've tried. But I haven't tried a lot of high-end powders because my belief has always kind of just been like, it's a powder, how good could it be? But the Laura Mercier one is really good. What I'm using now is the Glossier Cloud Paint Seamless Cheek Color, and this is in the shade Beam. This is kind of an orangey color. And I think this one also is applied best with the hands because you can really mesh it into your skin. And you might be thinking like, you just <laughs> covered that area so it wouldn't look as red, and now you're putting red on it. This is true. You know, sometimes during my other routines, I actually don't put on blush if I have like a natural look going because my cheeks probably will get red enough during the day where it's like I don't look super washed out if I'm not wearing blush. A lot of times I'll just wear bronzer, but for the sake of this, I don't have a bronzer. I don't know. I don't think Glossy makes a bronzer. 
But the point of this is to show you that you can easily go in between these products and layer. Like, I can just put some more stretch concealer on top of that if I think that I put on too much of the blush. And now we're going to move on to Halo Scope. My Halo Scope is looking really grimy. Um, this is in the shade Moonstone. I think this is the best for my skin tone color. It's the lightest one they have. For this, through my experimentation with this product, you're not going to want to swipe this on if you have issues that I have. If you've already done work covering stuff up, you're not going to want to swipe it on. This is more so if you have perfect skin and maybe you're not wearing makeup, then you can swipe it on. Um, but it will pull up your makeup, so I would just work it around with the finger and then you're just going to tap it on. Now this product is very different from a lot of things you might use because it is quite like a bomb. Um, think about it if you kind of just put a little bit of a thinner consistency Vaseline on your face. Like, it will give you kind of that intense glowy shine because it is not going to dry down at all. It's not going to set. It's going to feel sticky all day. So that's something you're not interested in, then wouldn't recommend buying it. But it can have, it can give you a very beautiful finish. Like, it really can. If you're looking for that kind of glass skin trend. I'm going to put some under my eyebrows. Typically don't really like doing this. You can also put it on your eyelids. I'll do that for the sake of this video, but like this sh shit is going to crease. Especially if you have oily eyelids like me. Powder eyeshadow creases on me if I'm not using a primer. Um, so I know this is going to crease on me, but it's the point of the video is to show the products. So this is what it would be like to have a whole glossier eye. I clipped the other side, but that side's gonna come out now, so great. Next product I have is Glossier Boy Brow. This is a cult favorite for people. I do see the hype in this because I feel like this one does do the best in actually holding your brow hairs up. Um, but I don't know, if you have to purchase this online and pay shipping, I'm not sure I could recommend it. I don't think that I would repurchase it if I was only ordering this one product. I just don't think it's mind-blowing enough. Like, it's a brow gel. Does it have the best hold? Probably, but... Um, I just don't think it's different enough to warrant buying it. If that's the only one item that you need to buy. It's probably a bit too dark for me now that I'm blonde, but... It's gonna do. Now, I personally don't own the Glossier Mascara because I've seen the way it looks on people. And it just looks like a lengthening natural mascara, and I really don't think that's something you need to invest in when there are so many good drugstore mascaras. So I'm just going to put on a little bit of mascara. Oh, you can see that's already creased on me, like that's how fast it'll crease. Um, a light layer of mascara to achieve the Glossier look. If you try the Glossier mascara and it's like your holy grail, please leave me a comment down below, let me know. Explain to me why it's the best thing ever and why I should give it a chance. But I just personally don't think I could ever see myself recommending a high-end mascara. I just don't think they're worth it, especially when mascaras don't have a long shelf life. If you're supposed to get rid of them within three months, I just don't... I just can't see, like, spending money on a Dior mascara. It just doesn't make sense to me. Before I move on to the last product I have from Glossier, just going to set my face with a little bit of powder in the areas that will need it, which is the chin, underneath the eyes, and right in this porous area right here, the nose, and on the forehead a bit. Now I'm just using the Maybelline Fit Me Powder. Okay, so the last product I have in the lineup is the Generation G lipstick. I'm just going to line my lips first. Definitely don't have to do this. This is the Glossier Generation G, I think it's called Generation G matte lipstick in the shade Cake. Now I like the idea of this 
one swipe, two swipes. It's like a blotted down lipstick. The only thing I don't like, I just don't like the smell of it. Especially since this one's called Cake, I feel like they could have made a nicer smell. Um, typically don't like scents and products. Maybe this is unscented, maybe that, that's why it doesn't have a great smell. But I feel like it just smells kind of old in a way. And it just gives you like um, a nice blotted, I didn't try too hard type of look. And this is kind of a really great formula for everyday wear where you don't want to commit to like a, a long lasting liquid lipstick. But you just want something that's kind of sheer and just meshes with your lips well. The only thing I'll say about this is that I find it quite drying on my lips. Um, I don't know, throughout the day, I don't know if it's just me and I'm neurotic, but I'll find that it feels dry. So I'll just kind of like keep moving my lips together and maybe that makes it more dry. But yeah, even right now as first application, I feel like it feels dry. But then again, when I started, my lips were kind of dry anyway. Typically, I would put a gloss on top of it. I use the Fenty Gloss Balm, but it's in my coat pocket, so I'm not going to get it. Um, I'm just going to put on a little bit of petroleum jelly. For a bit of hydration. Alright guys, this is the finished look. Very dewy, very natural looking. You can see real skin through, that's a freckle. You can see imperfections. You can see that it's already creasing in my eyes. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you so much for tuning into this video. Please leave a comment down below letting me know if you've tried any Glossier products, if you like them. If you have uh, acne, if, if you find that they work for you or not, do they break you out? Let the other people who might be reading the comments know too, because that's helpful. I hope you took something away from this video, and I want you to remember, don't just make up your face, make up your mind too, and I will see you next time. Thanks. Ooh, that was, that was a weird wave. That was a... Uh, okay. Bye-bye. <laughs> Another weird wave. Okay. Just bye. Am I out of focus this whole video? I think I'm probably out of focus this entire video. I filmed this video two times already. First time, it was overexposed and it made me look like I had perfect skin. Which, just, you can't talk about how you have acne and redness and then your face doesn't look like it has acne or redness. That's a pet peeve of mine on YouTube. People are like, ew, look how gross this looks on my skin and you're just like... <laughs> You literally look flawless, but okay. <laughs> Show me how gross it looks then. Turn the lighting down. Stop using a filter. I don't know what your tricks are. If you have a whole fucking lighting set up in your house, like it's a movie fucking set, like obviously you're gonna look good. Anyway, show me a natural light or something. But what was I saying? Oh, second time I filmed this, my heater was just making this horrible buzzing sound the entire time. So we're on to the third time, sitting here in the cold, shivering to death, but I did it. I made it through and I made this video, so I hope you like it.